Hey y'all, and welcome back. Welcome back to Lisa's Cottage. I do believe we are embarking on week three of our 10 tidbits of cleaning tips series. And we'll just start right here in the laundry room with tip number one. We're going to start with our front loading washer drawer that we put our laundry soap in, our fabric softener, and our bleach. We're gonna pull that out. We're gonna run some dish, uh, some dishwashing liquid and hot water, warm to hot water in my handy dandy bucket here. Put in the sink and then put the dishwashing liquid and the hot water in and put my drawer in it to um, be cleaning while I wash the inside here that the little uh, drawer goes in. And to pull it out, in case you've never pulled yours out before, here's the little button right there, that little white button in between that pre-wash slot and the bleach slot. And you just push that down and you just pull it out. But that little button, you push it down and it releases it to be able to pull your drawer out. I'll show you. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm sure you can because this camera seems to pick up quite a bit. I've seen, I've seen layers of dust on stuff that I didn't see with my naked eye. Um, there's a build up there that I'll be washing off. And you may think, hey, it's in the washer. It gets washed every time we use it. Well, you do get some build up. And then, um, like these little trays here come out. Then I'm just going to put them in the my dish washing liquid here and then this bleach softener little tray it also comes out uh, yeah I just lift up on it and I'm gonna put it over in here and see how nasty that wasn't actually the bleach tray that was the fabric softener tray look how nasty that gets and then I will show you inside of where the drawer sits. So, sure can smell some fabric softener going on, so I can't say it's a stinky job. I think I'm just gonna put this in here like this instead of completely submerging it, and then I'll just spray some cleaner on that, and then um, wash that out by hand with the, the entire drawer and water. I put those two compartments and then I'll spray some sprayer on that and rinse it with, uh, wash it with uh, a soft cloth and then rinse it with hot water and I will dry it out. I'll dry all the pieces out after I wash them. I'll dry them out before I put the drawer back in. But now I wanna show you the drawer. And that is the drawer. See how it gets funky? And right there with the fabric softener, or that actually looks like the laundry soap, or both, um, does not wash down. So I'll take a warm rag that I've soaked in my dishwashing liquid, and I will wash this down, and then I'll probably dry it all down too before I put the drawer back there in. There we have it. Tip one. Our drawer to our front loading washer. Tip two. Our lint compartment. What do we call it? Our lint, lint door maybe? Um, of course you need to pull that out after every load. Open it up and clean it out. But I'm going to show you what I will do every now and then. So while this is soaking, um, I just went ahead and laid this drawer here across my wash basin that has the two inserts down in the wash basin soaking. I sprayed the drawer, this part of the drawer, with the Method All-Purpose Cleaner. And you can see somebody's needing some more. But, um, so while those are soaking, I'm gonna take this outside. This is upside down, that's why it looks like that. I went ahead and opened the, the door there. And um, I'm gonna take it outside, and I'm gonna use this toothbrush that was in this toothbrush case here that's only used for the dryer lint. That's, I've got it labeled dryer lint screen brush. So this is the before. When you have your lint screen out, um, 
you can get down in there and clean the dust, the um, lint out too, because it gets pretty uh, dirty too with all the lint. And you may have to order one like off of Amazon or like, I think we probably got ours from Lowe's. Um, just ask them for a lint, uh, lint brush um, for your, made for your dryer. And then hopefully they can direct you where you need to go. And then what you will need to do is um, you will stick it down in there and then you'll just work it around and just turn it. You can kind of feel where it curves and just kind of twist and turn it the best you can and see what dirt and lint you can get out. I'm gonna try this and then I'll come back and show you what I was able to get, if anything. So if anything, you can tell where it just kind of breaks it. It was breaking it up. So maybe when I turn the dryer on, it will shoot it on out the vent there. Um, and this is what I was able to get out. Wasn't bad, wasn't too bad at all. Word of caution. Try not to do this after you have dusted. Um, you won't be very happy with yourself because it's gonna throw the dust and the dirt everywhere. And then if you do have a laundry room, which I call this my laundry room, you know my grandkids call it my laundry closet. And they're right in the aspect that I have to stand on the outside of this, these two doors to work with the washer and dryer. But if you have a laundry room that has a door, uh, if you have a door, shut your laundry room. That way all the dust kicked up will be contained there inside of your laundry room with the door closed. So I'm gonna move on and then I'm gonna clean that up. I'm probably gonna go pull out my um, small hand vac and I'm gonna back up, uh, what, vacuum up the areas that I can get and get the dust and the dirt up off the floor and take the brush outside and um, shake it off, beat it off, whatever it takes to get that little bit of lint off of it. So, but that, that one wasn't too bad. I'm almost sure I've done this like over the spring. And if anything, it's just to help um, break up any lint that's caught there right at where the lint, where the screen goes. And maybe like I said, when I turn the drawer on, it will blow it down and shoot it out. Okay, so I have them washed out. I have the lint screen brushed off with the um, toothbrush that's used for that. Okay. So I was able to get the um, drawer washed out and scrubbed up and dried up. And then these two little compartments that go back inside of this drawer. And I'm gonna put those back together. Done in there. Washed out. Now to put the drawer back in. The drawers back in. Got it all put back together and back in. Slide it in, call it done. Onto the dryer. Got the lint cleaned up, the brush cleaned off. And I actually just took the vacuum to it, my little hand vacuum. Now to put the lint door back in. And there it is. Just put it back down into its little slot. And the dryer is done. Tip one and tip two. And then tip three, bleach your um, garbage cans out as needed. Um, this one I had spilled some wax down in and that line down there is waxed. So I've been trying to get that out. So while you're doing other work, you can put your um, kitchen garbage trash cans in one of your tubs. And mine has uh, bleach in it, so that's bleach water, hot water, and bleach. And I'm gonna let that sit while I do some other work. Tip three, remember to clean those garbage or trash cans. And another tip, like when I put the quick shine on the hardwood floors, um, I will pull these vents up. So there's another tip. You can pull your vents up and like I take mine into the laundry room and uh, wash them in the laundry room. So if you put them in a tub, um, anything that will scratch up, you might want to lay a towel down in the bottom of your tub before laying um, your vents in your tub or your shower. If you have like fiberglass or like porcelain, protect those by laying a towel down 
or if you have a bath mat. So there's another tip. You can use your vacuum that has a hose or your vacuum to vacuum around the vents and what you can get of it while your vents are soaking in there. Dishwashing liquid and warm to hot water. And that's what they look like. I've laid a towel down to protect the bottom. Not that I'm really worried about the laundry sink bottom, but that's what you do. of caution when you do have your vents removed from their hole in the floor, you might want to do just one or two at a time. Um, and it's really best that you do something like this when you're at home by yourself so an animal can't fall or um, a, a, a child or like you back up and your foot slip down into it. So that's just a word of caution. Like if you are cleaning them and uh, there are people coming in and out of the house or you have um, people at home or animals, you can just get a small bucket of uh, warm water with your uh, dishwashing liquid and just drop them down into the uh, bucket there and while you're vacuuming that out, your vent can be sitting in your warm water. And then once you get it vacuumed out, take it out and um, wipe it off and put it back in. That way you're not leaving any of the vent holes open. So here's like an example. Um, say like I had my, say Abella was still here and uh, I wasn't blocking her off into a room. That was our little Maltese but I didn't want to have the open holes in the floor because she could fall in it. Um, take your vent cover out, put it in your bucket with um, the water and the dishwashing liquid, and then while you're using your vacuum to vacuum out the hole, just let that sit there. And then when you're done, take the rag in here, wipe it, and have a drying rag, uh, you wipe it off and then you dry it off and you put it back in and you've never left the hole unattended. I guess that's the mama in me or the grandma in me or the caregiver. And then there it is after I vacuumed it and I've got the cover ready to put back in. Get that done. So no one falls in it. It's in. And that one's been vacuumed out. And that one's been vacuumed out. Now to um, wash this cover off and get them back in the hole. And like I said, I try to take them out on the days that I'm putting the quick shine down. I have um, left them in before and gone over them by accident. Um, because I am used to taking them out back when I used to wax the floor and if you don't um, if you go over those vent covers when you're when I used to put the Johnson wax down the quick shine may not do it but it would leave the wax build up on the actual um, vent and it looks kind of yucky when that happens so some of my vent covers are gonna have a little yuckiness on them and there's the after I've taken it out I've washed it I vacuumed down in the uh, vent duct hole thingy and dried the vent cover and it's back in. Okay, now on to our air vent return. My doors I have, I think, four. <laughs> we have four of these. I have another one this size, then I have a, one up in the bonus room, a little bit smaller, and then one out in my workout room and a, like a small office area. Um, has it even a smaller one but we're just gonna uh, focus on the two here today so um, I just take the door completely off um, I'll show you how it comes down there's a latch there's a latch and then you tilt it you tilt this down and then it has like two little hooks under there and you just uh, those little hooks when you bring the door completely down they'll pop out and you can take the entire door off and then well, today but I'm gonna go ahead and take them outside and just fill my or not fill the bucket up but get a bucket of warm to hot water with my Dawn and I have this like a little scrub brush and I'm just gonna take them outside 
and I'm going to wet them down with the hose pipe and then I'm just going to take that scrub brush and go over them and let them drip dry outside. Ready and the now? next tip, while these um, return doors are outside drip drying or drying in the sun, we'll move on to the next tip. Okay, see how this door just tips down and it's laying on the floor. All I'm going to do is lift up and it will release it right there and just pick it up and take it outside. And I'll do the same thing with this one. And then I just brought them outside like this and used my Dawn in hot water, my scrub brush, and my hose pipe. Now they're just gonna drip dry or dry enough while I move on to the next tip. And then I'll bring a towel out here and dry off the remaining water and take them back in and put them back. So there we have it. Another tip. Remove your vent covers and take them outside and wash them. And another tip that just kind of follows right in behind the removing the return um, vent doors. While you're doing that and they're outside washing and uh, they're not washing yourself, but I've already washed them. Now they're just out there sitting and uh, drip drying in the sun. And then I'll have to take a towel out there and uh, finish drying them off before I bring them back in. But you can take one of your cleaning rags that you've already been using on the other vents uh, in the house and just wipe around right here. And then this will be the next tip. That's the filter that's being thrown away that just came out of there. And it will be replaced with a clean filter. And I was gonna show you. I have not always known this actually. Until the past several few several years. Well I don't have my eyeballs on. When I say I don't have my eyeballs on, I actually mean I don't have my glasses on or contacts in, which I don't have any of those right now. I had to go get my eyeballs, AKA glasses. Oh, you gotta hear me off camera. You can only imagine, huh? Okay, on here, it actually has a place to write the date. And I think Ken told me these are 90 day filters. So we've gone just a little bit past 90. What is that, July, July, August, August, September, September, October. So we're not that bad, but um, we are off. So you can write the date on there, and if it's 30-day filters, then you replace it every 30 days. If it's the 90-day uh, filters, then you replace it every three months, and you just write the date on there. And the arrows are showing you um, the way you're supposed to place it for the airflow uh, through the circulation, for the circulation. So if it's pointing that way, it's telling us that we need to put the arrows in in order for airflow for the filter to work properly so just in case you didn't know there's the arrow in there showing you which way to point it in and to put your date on so you will know when you last changed them as you can see that was pretty dirty so it's kind of saying you are a little overdue but hey we're getting it done right okay I'm only doing two today I have four but I'm only doing two today so there we are with another tip. So those two tips just kind of follow in behind one another when uh, you're cleaning your uh, return vent. Um, then you can change your filters and write the date on your filters that you changed them and be sure that um, they're installed properly. So here we go. And focus, focus, focus. Really, and the new date, 11 19. And the clean filter, I've just got it sitting on the floor. That's why it looks like that because it won't stay in there if the air, the heat's not on, which it is on right now. But I did date it and um, it's sitting there. I'm going to get a rag to wipe around the outside of it and then go get a dry towel and dry the fence off and bring them in. Okay, clean filter in and dated. Now to go get the um, return doors and put them back on. These are just tips that I'm just throwing in that's not cleaning tips. You wanna make sure you you have not just had a manicure when you do this kind of work or you just painted your nails yourself. I paint my own nails. 
and you probably don't want to do these tips that I've been doing today right after you've dusted the house because th these kind of tips are throwing up a lot of dust and dirt. So those are just two extra tips. And it's done. It's just a little bit of water still left in between the vents. So I can just take a towel over. No big deal. Gotta lock it up now. I need to. And they're put back together. One. And two. They're back together. Yippee, skippy. And we're counting down to our final tips. Don't know if you've ever noticed, but I have two Keurigs. I have this small personal one, then I have the bigger one in the dining room in my uh, coffee station area that has like the water reservoir on the side. Long story short, I had one just like the one in the dining room before, and I do drink a lot of the cappuccinos, which are powder drinks. Somehow the powder drinks messed up the needle somehow, some way, or it was already messed up and then somehow it got messed up and that one got replaced. So now I use this one strictly for powder drinks. Um, I didn't know this until I read the, uh, instru the manual the second time I had gotten uh, for my second um, larger cure rig in there. So the tip was when you use powder drink like I do, and I'll use the powder drink in here, like for hot cocos or my cappuccinos, you're supposed to run um, clear wa a cup of clear water through the machine after you've uh, made your cappuccino or your hot cocoa, and I will show you why, and it has helped, and I'll show you why. So I pour this water into the top, and then I just go through all the steps, just like you would if you were making a cappuccino or a, a cup of hot cocoa, and then you'll see why it's why it tells you to run clear water through the machine after you've used any drink that's a powdered drink. So I'm gonna pour this water in and brew it and you'll see why. I can almost hear y'all saying, girl, we knew that. Why didn't you know it? So it's warming up to brew. Just the clear water, plain water. There's no pot in there. So that one don't look too bad. You can see a little bit of stuff floating in there. But I have seen it where it just spits out hunks of yuck. Even though it's just the powder drink that you made through the machine. But I don't want to be drinking it. There's another tip. Run clean, clear water through your machine after using it for powder drinks such as cappuccinos or hot cocoa. Anything that's powder. Now you have it. We're really closing in on the tips. So you have your little battery um, operated vacuum or any vacuum that has the little rollers on the bottom with the little brushes and you find it's not picking up as good as it used to. I find, and it, I have to do this quite often, if you flip it over and if you will look on those rollers, which mine's just been cleaned, but you can see a little bit. If you look on those rollers, um, you'll find where hair carpet fibers, strings, or anything will get wrapped around these uh, brushes and it binds them up and it can't spin the way it's meant to. If you find that your vacuum's not picking up as good as it used to, flip it over, take a look at the, that's, uh, the spin brushes, see if anything's um, wound, bound up around it, loosen it up, try it out and see if that helps. Check the bottom of your vacuum. And here we are in my bathroom with the tipped in. So you don't want to use gloves the whole time you're cleaning the bathroom, like on the sink and the tub, or you don't want to use the same pair of gloves that you use on the toilet, on the sink and the tub. So keep some um, medical gloves like this in your bathroom. And um, actually that's two pair in there because my husband gave me a handful of gloves that we keep in the RV. And then I had some left. Um, that you can keep in your bathroom to clean your toilet. And then after you clean your toilet, you just pull them off and you throw them straight in the trash. And it's just that simple. There you go. So that is a wrap to this week's 10 tidbits of cleaning tips. So now I get to get all the, gather all, well they are gathered, they're behind this door, these two doors. All the cleaning rags that I used for these 10 tidbits of cleaning for this week and 
get them in the washing machine, washed up, dried up, and put back away and ready to go again for next week. So until we meet again, you all take good care and bye-bye.